So we figured out this kind of surprising result that we called the rank nullity theorem. If you have any linear map between finite dimensional vector spaces, the rank of uh, that map plus the nullity of that map is equal to the dimension of the uh, the dimension of the domain space. Um, so if you remember, we looked at several examples where we calculated the rank and the nullity of a map. So let's come back to those examples and check that the rank nullity theorem really is true for all of those all of those examples. Um, so the first one was this projection map pi two that goes from R three to R, and the nullity that we calculated for this was two. The dimension of the null space is two, clearly because the null space is spanned by uh, one zero zero and zero zero one. The rank is dimension. Uh, the rank of this map is one because the dimension of the image space is, is one. The image is all of R, so it's one dimensional. Uh, and the rank nullity theorem says that the nullity, which is two, plus the rank, ought to be equal to the dimension of the domain space. So what is the dimension of R three? Well, it's three. And yes, two plus one is three. So the rank nullity theorem checks out for this example. All right, the next example we looked at was this one. So this map from R2 to P2 that takes AB to this polynomial. The nullity we worked out was zero. So the only vector that gets sent to the zero polynomial is the zero vector. So the nullity was zero because the dimension of the null space was zero. The rank, uh, so we, worked, we found a basis for the image and we found the basis had two, L, two polynomials in it, two linearly independent polynomials. <clears throat> so the dimension of the image was two. Now if we add these together, the nullity and the rank, we get two, and sure enough, that is the dimension of the domain space, R2, right? So the rank nullity theorem checks out again. Notice that uh, the dimension of the, the codomain space has no role to play in the rank nullity theorem. It just doesn't come into it at all. The last example we looked at was uh, from a matrix space to a Euclidean space. So this crazy map from M22 to R3. Uh, and the nullity we worked out was 2. And the rank we worked out was 2. And 2 plus 2 is 4, of course. And 4 is indeed the dimension of the matrix space M22. So uh, the rank, theor rank nullity theorem checks out once again. What we're seeing is that this visualizing we did a while ago of uh, thinking of a, a function sort of squashing in your domain space, squashing a, a parallel to the uh, squashing parallel to the null space, and then somehow taking that result and putting it over in the domain space. This is you know, a pretty accurate way to think about what any linear map does if you think of the domain space as a Euclidean space, which we can do because every finite dimensional vector space is isomorphic to a Euclidean space. So this sort of two-step process of thinking, what, thinking about what a linear transformation does really does capture, uh, capture some uh, important properties of what linear maps do. You don't want to take this too far, though, because uh, it one thing that this picture it f might fool you about is it makes you think that this image actually lives over in the domain space here as this red line, but it doesn't. That's not the case. So really what's happening is uh, these parallel planes are sort of equivalence classes of vectors. and. Uh, and what uh, is happening here is each point in the image corresponds to a whole equivalence class that's kind of parallel to the null space.